Thank you, Mark. That was um, inspiring. Um, now I want to introduce um, Professor Morrow, who only by chance did I discover she had a secret life. Um, I, we met actually um, in, on a panel where she was um, ducking and diving and slicing up um, analytical arguments, and I had no idea that she had this um, very tactile, passionate side to her character until we got to the pub. I'll just introduce Ruth Morrow. Good. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I have to start the press button. Okay, so I'm going to talk this evening a little bit about um, something called making mad ideas seen. And for that, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the process and the potential of that process. Some of you will see that I'm partly in academia and partly in business. And if anybody uh, spans the two, you will also know that you're eminently qualified to talk about madness and sanity <laughs> because that is induced in us. Anyway, so making hard ideas uh, or hard things soft is what we do. That's where our passion is. Um, and I do that together with Trish Belford, who's here in the uh, audience. She's a textile designer and I'm an architect. Um, and we've been engaged in this process, this kind of pursuit for nine years. So that's quite a long time to try and pursue a mad idea. Um, it's led to the formation of a company, Tactility Factory, and also some patented technologies and some very beautiful surfaces, which I hope you'll get to stroke later on. And in effect, what we are doing is bringing together the technologies of textiles and concrete, and we make those blend on the surface. It's a permanent um, co-forming of the surface. So this talk, I'm going to cover a little bit about what is it that has driven us mad in the first place and then some of the conditions that support our move towards sanity, because that's where we're heading, obviously, long term. Um, and it's going to talk about time, lineage, and experience. So what's made us mad in the first place? Well, 20 seconds isn't long enough. <laughs> but um, I'm an inclusive feminist, and what that means is that I look critically at the built environment for the purposes of including all people. Um, and it means that I try and understand uh, what is it that makes our environments the way they are? And one of the things I'm interested in is the fact that our components and our materials are manufactured more in line with the technical specification than the human specification. So these are stills from an animation that Trish and I did very early on. It's a way to capture our ambition. It's a young girl walking through an urban environment, and as she trails her hand along the surfaces of the buildings, she, as she does that, the buildings acquiesce to her touch. Um, that's a kind of view that we've been pursuing for a long time. It's also about ambition and scale, obviously, but it's about the moments of caress. And in that, we kind of echo what Peter Rice, the famous Irish engineer, would say. He talks about reinstating the trace of the hand into construction of Castellama. Um, the first condition of moving towards sanity is time. Um, this is a very early sample that we did. So that's nine years ago. That's what it started off looking like. Um, and thing, the thing about being expert in, in textiles and concrete is you somehow seduce yourself into thinking that when you bring the two together, you're going to know how to do that. Um, in fact, hybridization doesn't lead to hybrid uh, outcomes. It leads to new material. So this is a new material. It's taken us a long time to test and trial and craft and test and trial and craft. Um, and as I say, we've been doing this for nine years. So we have developed textiles essentially that, well, we started with textiles that existed and we put those into concrete, but now we develop and manufacture our own textiles only for the purposes of concrete, and the concrete is manufactured and designed only for the purposes of embracing the textiles. Uh, to get that level of quality, you need to work at it. So that's why it's a slow thing. Um, let's see. The second uh, thing, uh, condition about uh, moving towards sanity is lineage. And of course, because we're from Northern Ireland, we come out of a tradition of construction and textiles. We also come out of shipping, but we tend not to talk about that. Um, those are our two indigenous uh, um, industries. And we lean a lot on the knowledge. Sometimes when you come into our workshop, it's a bit like coming into Last of the Summer Wine, because it's full of old fogies giving us advice on concrete and textiles something to be seen. Um, and we're particularly keen to use linen. This is linen and concrete together. Linen is perfect for concrete. Linen is, as you know, a cellulose fiber. That means that in its, well, it's a very tough fiber, but in its own manufacturing, it means that it goes through, or able to go through kind of uh, alkaline, high alkalinity, which is perfect for concrete. So we understand it as our vinegar and chips range. And occasionally we, we season that up 
a little with a bit of salt, also known as our stitching. And the stitching, in a way, echoes for us some of the stitching that went in all of those millions of linen handkerchiefs that sailed out of the port of Belfast. Um, the third condition is experience. Um, we're a very strong, diverse team. We come from a very uh, wide range of experience and years of experience. Um, we rely on textile designers, stitchers, printers, and dyers. Uh, we also have worked with craft guild people in the early stages, uh, embroiderers. Um, and we also rely on concrete. The pre precast industry in Northern Ireland has been fantastic at supporting what we do. Um, and Morris Neil is a consultant, precaster has worked with us all the way through. But interestingly, our processes are equally formed and informed by graphic designers and patent attorneys, very clever people at getting you to focus your technology. Um, and that experience it really comes to bear. For in truth, and let's be honest about this, the territory of innovation isn't just the sole domain of those young upstarters or start uppers, is that right? Something like that. It is also inhabited and should be inhabited by people with long years of experience. So we also need to give middle aged women like me a break. Um, okay, so this is what we look like, the three surfaces. So this is a crystal bead, a linen, um, linen concrete and velvet concrete. Um, and we also add a little bit of stitches you saw earlier on. Um, they're very beautiful things, um, and we use those kind of on skins. They're very thin skins, about 10, uh, 10 millimeters. Um, and we did a range of commissions in the early days in Northern Ireland, because when you're in innovation territory, one of the most important things is to build trust. It's quite difficult for an innovative product to break into the market. So therefore, the trust came back on uh, Trish and myself and people would employ us on that basis but more recently we have started to do a number of jobs around the world and this is a large project that completed uh, around about September um, it's uh, panels about 3.5 uh, tall by 1.3 and it's a range of velvet very dusky beautiful grey velvets with concrete and uh, gold bead and concrete um, and this has also helped us to gain investment as we move forward so just today we signed off on the legals for investment Yay! Um, final slide. Tactility Factory is definitely on a big long journey. This for me is one of the most beautiful buildings in Ireland. It is a moss covered um, cow shed outside Temple Patrick for those of you who want to visit it. Very technically clever because it's a lightweight um, shell uh, fabric formed concrete um, and we want to go outside. So if you want to join us on that journey please let's, you know, let us know. Come and speak to us. Thank you very much.